Greetings. Uh, I'll be discussing uh, exact equations in module two, uh, where we're talking about linear and nonlinear first order equations. So let's start talking about them. Uh, talking about exact differential equations is uh, asking you guys to solve equations of that form. Now, trying to solve these exact differential equations uh, requires us to think about, as I've discussed before when we were together, to think about where does this come from or is there anything in calculus that resembles this, this, this specific type of a differential form of an equation. Now, if you recall from uh, multivariable calculus, and if you haven't had it, just think of it as a fresh lecture, if you have a function of two variables and uh, you take the derivative of this, known as the total differential, the derivative of z as a function of two variables is defined as such, partial of f partial of this function with respect to x dx plus, plus partial of f with respect to y dy. Now, if, if your f of x happens to be in a special f scenario, if z is equal to f of x, y is equal to a constant, and that happens a lot in the world of applications to engineering and sciences, then this equation here, the dz part becomes zero because the derivative of a constant independent of whether it's a multivariable function or not, it's zero. So we end up with this. And if you think about it, if you look at these two right here, you must see the similarity here. It looks like it looks like it's basically when you when when they're dealing with a, with a differential equation known as an exact differential equation, it looks like that differential equation came from some function of f of x y which was differentiated and was set equal to zero because it was equal to a constant. So basically, what we're doing is given this equation, we want to figure out could we find such fxy equal to a constant that if I took the total differential of this I'll get my differential equations back. So that's basically the uh, the genius behind recognizing how to solve differential equations of this format, right? And uh, and I've given you guys an example here is an equation uh, or, or, or a function of two variables f of xy equals to a constant and if I take the total differential of this I get that and in this section we're gonna do the exact opposite we're gonna give you the differential equation and we're gonna ask you what function was it that produced this differential equation once you took the total differential okay now of course there's a note that not every first order differential equation written in differential form corresponds to a uh, total differential of f of x y equal to c in their uh, criteria that you will have to satisfy in order for you to get the green light to go ahead and go to go through the procedure now in order to do this we'll define definition of exactness and you'll see this in the problems now uh, i'm just going to scroll down to the definition of exactness and it's given that if such equation is given if partial of m with respect to the opposing variable y is equal to the partial of n with respect to the opposing variable of y which is x so you flip the flip the the derivatives and they're equal then then you assume that the differential equation you're working with is an exact differential which means that there is such scenario f of x y equal to c where the total differential of it would have given you your differential equation so we can go backwards trying to find that f of x y so let me give you an example so you could see how this is done of course you notice i've given you the procedure here actually let me go over the procedure anyhow just before i even do an example so the idea is that they've given us an, a differential equation of that form and and we start with saying okay now given that that differential equation is exact if partial of n with respect to y is equal to partial of n with respect to x and if that's the case then i can assume that this actually is 
partial of f with respect to x dx plus partial of f with respect to y dy because that's what the total differential was, right? So, so what does that tell you? That tells you that here, if I look at it from a system point of view, partial of f with respect to x is the same thing as m of xy. And partial of f with respect to y is the same thing as n of xy. Okay, so now, so we're actually not going backwards. So what happens here is, these are your two conditions for every differential equation of this form. And at this point, what you do is, and again, don't forget, the objective is to solve this differential equation, which means I need to find some f of x, y that was equal to a constant. That will be my solution. And that's what I'm trying to find. And I have two equations here that are going to help me do it. So how do you go through this process? Well, you pick one of these, preferably the one that's easier to integrate. So here in my procedure here, I've picked partial of f spec to x. So you pick this one. You integrate both sides with respect to obviously x here. You don't have to flip the uh, derivatives. You just stay with it. So partial of f spec to x dx would be the same thing as, so you integrate both sides with respect to dx. Now, if you do so, by fundamental theorem of calculus, this becomes f of x, y, which is exactly what you want to find. And equal to constant at the end, you just set it equal to a constant. You have to worry about that. And that becomes the integral of m of x, y, dx. Plus, and assuming that you knew what m was, you would integrate this because you're dealing with a function of two variables. The constant wouldn't be a constant. The constant would be a function of one variable. And since the differential is in terms of x, the constant will have to be in terms of y. So the constant, when you're integrating a function of two variables, is, is not a scalar. It's actually a function in terms of the, you know, the other variable, which is g of y. Now, if you were integrating dy, your constant would have been g of x. Okay? If, you, if you're integrating with respect to dx, your constant will be g of y. And you notice that gives you uh, if, uh, that gives you the solution almost, yeah? which is f of x, y is what you're trying to find, but you still need to figure out what that g of y is. But remember, you have, to change the color of this, remember you have another equation for f, where if you take the partial of f with respect to y, n of x, y, which you already have, you, you have n of x, y, it's right there, and you set it equal to this right here, I mean, when actually the derivative of that with respect to y, then equate coefficients, that's how you could actually find g of y. Now, that could be a bit confusing, but uh, if you actually read this through a couple of times and then look at the examples, it will actually make sense. So the best way for me to do this for you would be to actually go through an example for you to see how these things all evolve. All right, so let's start with this uh, first example here. Let's see. Let me just move out and actually do this for you guys from scratch. All right, so I'm going to write the differential equation 2x, uh, y, dx, plus x squared minus 1 dy equal to 0. And that's what we need to solve. And again, recall that for solving this, I need to ultimately find f of x, y is equal to a constant, and that will be the solution. All right, so now if you think about this, let's write this, uh, let's, let's try to find m and x, uh, m and n. Now here, m of x, y, if I just write this, n of x, y, dy equal to 0, that's the general form, tells me that m of x, y is equal to 2 x, y, and n of x, y is equal to x squared minus 1. Okay, so now the first thing I need to do before I try to search for f of x, y using the reverse process of total differential in multivariable calculus, I need to make sure that this is an exact equation, which means I need to conduct a test for exactness, which means partial of m with respect to y must equal to partial of n with respect to x. Well, let's do that and see if that's true. Well, if m of x, y is 2x plus y, 
I mean 2xy, then partial of m with respect to y will be the partial of 2xy with respect to y. So what's the derivative of this with respect to y? It's whatever that's not y as a constant, so it'll just be 2x. Now if I do the same to the other one, if I take partial of n with respect to x, we'll be taking partial of x squared minus 1 with respect to x, and that's 2x as well. So you notice that the partials are the same, which means the test for exactness has been satisfied, and that's green light for us to actually get going and solve this problem. Okay, so now recall the total differential. I'm going to write that one more time so you guys could see it. It's partial of f with respect to x dx plus, and that's dz, partial of f with respect to y dy, and if it's equal to a constant, it will be equal to zero. Now, comparing this to the given equation, it shows me that partial of f with respect to x seems to be 2xy. And partial of f with respect to y seems to be x squared minus 1. So here are the two equations you can start with. Now, let's pick one and go from there. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick the one that doesn't have any y's in it. So I'm going to start with, uh, I'm going to start with this one. I'm going to start with that one. So I'm going to say, okay, partial of f with respect to y, I know, is equal to x squared minus 1. Now, if I integrate both sides with respect to y, the integral of the partial of respect to y dy will just be f of xy. And the integral of x squared minus 1 dy will just be x squared minus 1 y plus a constant. But since the differential is with respect to y, the constant will be with respect to x. 